Hello everyone, in this Blender Branch tutorial we're going to be doing some basic color keying inside of Blender. Let's get right into it. Alrighty, so with Blender open, I'm going to clear my scene and change the resolution over here on the right side to 100. And we're going to go to the compositing node and just change this to the timeline. I'm going to drag that over, just give us some more space here. Press in to get rid of that sidebar. And I'm going to check use nodes and backdrop and delete both of those and just add in a movie clip and just search for wherever you have your footage saved. And I used a blue screen. If I press control shift and click, then we have our viewer drop in automatically for us. And we press V, we can zoom out and Alt V zooms back in. Okay, now I'm just going to select a random frame that works. Me looking dramatically off in the distance. Eh, right here. That's nice. All right, now I'm going to press Shift A and just go down to Matte, and we're going to add in a keen node. And this is a fantastic node that Blender has uh, created. And it's has all kinds of settings here that are extremely useful and we'll talk through some of them. First of all, what I'm gonna do is select a color here and just grab a blue color, kind of a mid-tone and drop it in. And you can see it tried to get rid of all of that blue and basically what it did, what some of these settings are, uh, this dispel factor and the dispel balance. If I set that to zero, you can sort of see the opposite effect they have. Um, basically they're trying to take whatever didn't get keyed out and they're trying to desaturate it so that you know it's invisible but obviously this would be extremely obvious over top of an image <laughs> and it would look horrible um, so we need to tweak all of these settings but before we do that I find a way that really makes a lot of the keying easier is to create sort of a mask before we get any further so if I press Shift A and go to Matte and add in a box mask, you can see that it adds this little box right here. And we can move it around. Oh, if we hold down Shift, by the way, little tip, if you hold down Shift, it makes moving things around in Blender a lot easier, especially when the increments seem to be rather hard to work with. So I'm just uh, making this box sort of fit my body. And uh, yeah. It's going to fit where we need. I don't move around too much, so that's about all of the video that we need right there. So if we just plug this mask into the garbage mat of that key node, yay, <laughs> I'm now garbage. So that's not good, but all we need is a handy dandy invert node and just drop that in and that inverts that. So now everything outside of that mask is now garbage and that's very useful because now it means we just have to worry about whatever's inside of this mask. So uh, a couple things about this key node. Basically what a key node does is creates a mask and the black and white values of a mask determine what areas are color and what areas turn to alpha. So I'll explain what I mean. If I press control shift and click on this key node, you can see we see our mask. So everything that's black is going to be turned to alpha. Everything that's white is stain. And now, so obviously, it picked me out pretty well, but all this stuff, we need to get rid of it. And if we press Control shift click again, it sort of gives an outline of all of that. And that's very useful because um, what this edge kernel does right here, if I increase it, it sort of thickens that outline. So we can decrease the size of that so that we have less bleeding of the actual green screen onto our subject. You don't want to, you don't want that line to be invisible, but you want to really get rid of a lot of those white specks that are outside. So now if we press control shift, click again, we're back to the color and that's very useful. So, um, some of these settings, oh, before we go any further, this key node, we just use the eyedropper tool and that's useful, but I find if you just play around with this color wheel, to sort of adjust what color it tries to get rid of, you can get way better 
results because it tries to really get rid of everything. And boom, that worked really well. This pre-blur up here, by the way, that worked really well because anytime you you properly light your green screen and expose and properly expose your footage and white balance your camera and all that good stuff, uh, Blender will pretty much every time be able to pick up that color. But if you have a dark green screen, if you don't have enough light on your green screen, you know, if you have grainy footage and all that, it's going to be very difficult. So half the time the the trick to color keying or green screen or anything like that is always your footage properly exposing your footage and white balancing and all that good stuff i was basically just using one studio light that i have it was a tungsten light so i had to white balance my dslr for tungsten and the blues came through nicely and it was good contrast which enabled this to really pick up that color nicely okay enough about that uh, the pre-blur up here, what this does basically it takes everything you tried to key out and blurs it a little bit. So if I set that high, that kind of blurs everything. So I don't know if you can sort of see what that did. It blurred that edge nicely. But we have to always check our mask. So if I press Control Shift and click, uh, you can see inside our mask here, it's very clean. Everything's really nice except for maybe this spot right here that I believe is my mic, that's gonna turn to alpha and that's gonna be visible once we add in a background image. So we wanna try to get rid of that by maybe decreasing this clip white because what that tries to do is turn everything to white and I think that might get rid of that pretty nicely and that's pretty good. So now if we go back, yeah, that works, okay. So we have a pretty good key there, and that didn't take long at all. We have our box mask that masked out some of that those garbage areas. And we use this key node to sort of decrease the spill and blur that edge. Now we want to add in a background image. So if I press Shift A, and I'm just going to search for an alpha over node and plug that in. And now Shift A and add in an image node. We're going to open up. Just a random image that I have. And this is something I made for my website, just to have something on my website, made in Blender. Okay, so here's our image node. I'm just gonna plug it into the top of that alpha over node. And now it looks like, <laughs> it looks like our image has been printed onto a bed sheet, which is kind of funny. Um, so the way we get rid of that is if we take the mat from the key node and plug it into the factor of that alpha over node. And boom, there you have it. That image is now nicely behind me. And we have a pretty good key. You can see it even got it pretty well out of my hair, which is nice, that's always the hard part. And if I press Shift A, uh, of course we wanna add in some blur to this background image because, I mean, background image so has to be a little bit blurry <laughs> nice and of course you can do some final touch-ups if you want to do some color correction Oop, not that one color balance and that helps to sort of blend the images together if I brighten the lights you want to make sure you're after the alpha over node that way you're adjusting both images together and that helps to sort of blend them together nicely. So there you have it. It's a pretty simple blue screen or green screen, depending on what you're using setup. And uh, I find it's very useful. Blender is a lot of fun for doing this sort of thing. You just always want to make sure you have properly exposed footage and plenty of light in your scene. And then we just have our movie clip plugged into one keen node and those settings we adjusted based on a color that we picked. And then I have a box mask plugged into the garbage map and inverted just to give it of the garbage areas around the outside. And you can always use a custom mask if you go to you know motion tracking and select a mask or create a mask. You can just plug that right in there and it'll have the exact same effect. And from our key node, we just have it plugged into an alpha over node 
and a background image plugged in to that. And that's it. Simple color balance and you're finished. And that's how to do some basic color keen inside of Blender. So I hope this was useful and hope you can use it to create some awesome visual effects inside of Blender. Thanks for watching.